we had an example, or I wanted you folks to work through a little example of creating a little mini game. And I think where we left off last time is we work through the process of having two dice on the screen that you roll and you get the you get the total of the two dice. What I'm going to do today is we're going to change directions a little bit and let, I'm going to talk about your assignment for this week which is due next week. All right? And that will be to actually complete the game. All right, complete the high-low game. And I'll review the rules of the high-low game. And we'll talk about some of the new stuff we're going to add. Because we're going to add some stuff that we haven't quite gone over yet. But we will go over it this week. All right. So. You have. Should have something on your screen now. And if you didn't have it, I know there was a person that um, didn't get the copy or something like that. I, I posted what I had, which I think is right. All right. Two dice and a roll button. You roll, it gives you the values of the two dice. All right. Now, the high-low game works like this. You have a selection between three alternatives. Low, seven, and high. Actually, I'm drawing that as though as I'm in my iOS class. I'm drawing a segmented button. You can make it a drop down, whatever. Radio buttons. Experiment with the UI. All right, on this one. But your choices are low, seven, and high. If you bet low and it comes up two through six, you win. One times your bet. If you bet seven and it comes up seven, you win four times your bet. If you bet high and it comes up eight through 12, you also win one times your bet. Couple of things, and I'm gonna talk about things now that I would expect you to be able to do. All right, one would be to have a tally of how much the person has. Maybe they start out with 100. And if you know, it's a win and lose, you increment or decrement that. You could even do something with a little control to allow them to change their bet. So if they won, you know, you could bet two. And if they won, they would win two. And if they lost, they would lose two. If they bet sevens and they bet two, they'd win eight then. So this is the kind of thing that I would expect you'd be able to do now, at least with perhaps a little bit of investigation into some of these other um, form controls, form elements. All right. There's two things we want to add, though, to this, besides the basic game. One of them is we want to add a little dice animation. And play around with it. Well, we'll do. We'll. I'll go over an example of, of an animation today, and you can try that. You can, you can try a bunch of things and see if you can come up with something you like. Can you add a GIF in there and have it play the GIF, or do you have to create your own animation? That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. But we're going to look at a way where you can do an animation relatively easy. Relatively easy yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, the other thing is I want you to have a menu so you can turn the animation off. All right? So a menu option where you turn animation off. So complete the basics of the high-low game, which, given what we have so far, shouldn't be that hard to do. All right? And then add on the menu and add on the animation. What we're going to do today is we're going to test your knowledge of the countries of the world. Ooh, scary. There's other countries besides the country. <laughs> A couple. And let me see if it's installed on this device or not.
doesn't look like it is. So let me run it. Even if it is, it's probably a good idea for me to run it, given that occasionally I tweak the code. So we want to make sure we're running the exact same code that I'm showing here. All right. Again, like everything that I cover in this class, when I cover these DDL examples, it is not as though what is important is how to write a flag quiz game. We want to be able to take what we've learned here and extend it and be able to use it in another context. an error for some reason, which I don't know why. Well, it's becoming clear why I don't have my strings file. Let me try importing it again.
Here's the flag quiz. What is that? Your choices are U.S. Virgin Island, Dutch Antilles, or Hungary? Hungary. Are you joking? No, I can't see it. So oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I was going Virgin Islands. So well, it has a big VI on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to guess the Virgin Islands. And it's right. All right. Guess the country. Ethiopia, Namibia, Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands. That's what it did. It shook its head. That was cool. All right. I don't think it's Ethiopia. I'm going to do it again. No, nope. must be Namibia. Yeah. That's cool. It's not Mexico. Thinking it's not Mongolia. The other one. I, I don't even know like what they are. I, I, I guess it's my own ignorance. Uh, Yemen, Angola, South Africa. It was right. Wow. Right again. Right again. All right. I wanted to show you the animation. So that's one of the things that we are going to go for. The other thing is a menu. Now, <coughs> this is probably why I'm having issues with this. The menu part, um, we will talk about how it does menus. Then we'll talk about how you need to do menus from now on because they started getting rid of the menu button on the Android devices. and Instead, there's a little thingy up there for you to press, a soft uh, on the title bar. But the way the menu option works is you can select how many choices that you have. All right, so three, six, or nine. So if you pick nine then, not so fast. Your trouble, your, your, your questions get a little harder to do. You can also limit to the regions. So if you wanted to test just North America, let's say, we can reset the quiz, and then we only get countries from North America, and that should make your task a little easier. <coughs> That's the two things. Yeah, it's like United States, Canada, and Mexico, but there's all these other Haiti, Dominica, Belize, Haiti, Guatemala. Um, so there's a lot more than you'd think, or that I would think. All right. <coughs> So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the two things I want to focus on in this example are the menus and the animation. And the animation is actually fairly straightforward. All right, we'll take a look at it, and we'll play around a little bit with it, and, and, and we'll talk about some of the things that you could do and maybe some of the things that you could try. Now, the menu, I will show you how this one is coded. Then we will talk about how you will code um, yours. I don't know if we'll get to that today or if that will be for Wednesday. All right. <coughs> let's take our <coughs> let's take a tour through the app and let's for, let's look for other things that are different. Additionally, we will look at the rest of this app. Those are just sort of the new things that I want to focus on that are relevant for um, your particular assignment. I actually, as you were emailing it to me, I downloaded it from Deedle. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember my Deedle password at first. No actually, I couldn't remember my user ID. I almost always put my middle initial in my user ID, and I didn't. So. All right. And I'm going to open up text edit. so that we can take a look at some of this code a little closer. All right, flag quiz game. Android manifest. Nothing earth shattering there. All right, so we can, we can disregard it. Jelly Bean and all that, is that 
Well, SDK is 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 the the files that you use to develop your software, and then um, there should be some rough correspondence to it, but then to the operating system on your phone. When you, when you add the operating system restrictions in there, <clears throat> and the, the IDEs ensure that you're not adding anything that's not supported in those. So if you ran it all the way down to like operating system one of Android, 90% of the stuff that's available right now is not going to be there. So Android Studio slash Eclipse is going to ensure that it doesn't give you access to any of those things as well. So you can't accidentally <coughs> Oh. It's such a pain to program in Android because there's so many versions of it out there that are, people are still using right now. Right. But it changes so much. We've really got so many of them in the past five years. Yeah, for sure. All right. If we look under the resources, <coughs> we have um, colors. I think we had an example of that before where you can define a certain value for a color. text color, background color, correct answer, incorrect answer. That allows you to refer to those color names as opposed to having to say I want pound sign whatever so you can give a name to the color. Dimensions, I think we had a dimension file in the previous example. That's where you can put dimensions in your in, uh, relating to your layout in a file and then you don't have to hard code that. All right, You can point to the dimensions there. And then finally, our famous strings file. All right, we have two XML files, a main XML and a guess button. Why do you suppose, based on what you've seen with the application, why do we have two XML files? What does each one of them represent? Inflate? Inflate it, yeah. So you can inflate it over and over again. And and why is that a good thing? Because then you can just create the same amount. <coughs> Basically, you can create an unlimited amount of buttons, and they can share things. So, like, you can okay. just have one listener over and over and over again for the same, for, for the reoccurring button, for example. Now, we could have done, we could do almost the same thing simply by having three hard coded buttons. What is superior about having this approach where we have that in an XML file? Reusability. Reusability? Uh, that, that's it's true. Easier to read. I mean, just to, to okay. look at it. What specific feature within the app that I showed you sort of suggests that we want to have the buttons in a separate XML file? Animation. Not the animation. That you could change the number of buttons. All right. Like everything that you were saying was true. All right. And everything that you were saying was relevant. All right. But the real clincher here, the real reason why it's important in this case to do it is because we don't know how many buttons there's going to be. There's a variable number of buttons. Based on user setting, there can be nine buttons. Or we can click here and say there's only three buttons. So our UI, again, has a variable number of things in it, all right? Because of that, <coughs> it's best to have it. And in our case, the guest button contains a button, and everything that Jesse said about that is true. <laughs> the only difference being that we, um, we can choose how many uh, requests, uh, or uh, not requests, how many uh, options they have. If we look at the main XML, <coughs> notice this is an example of a nested sort of layout. Again, this is very much analogous to HTML, where you can have tags inside of tags. If we look at this layout, our main layout is a linear layout, 
where the elements are stacked vertically. So if you look at the layout of this, in general, stuff flows from top to bottom. But, like, that's on the top. Whoops. That's on the top. That's underneath it. That's underneath that. Then we have <coughs> potentially a table of buttons with one row or three rows. And then finally we have down there or something that says whether they got it right or not. So we have a linear layout for the main things, but that table layout in the middle here, and this table layout shows the buttons, all right, is within that. So within our linear layout where we start at the top and go our way down, we have a table, all right? And so we can nest layouts like that. <clears throat> now, here's one thing that, a little puzzling to me, all right? And that is, they put that button in its own XML file, yet they have hard-coded three rows. That seems to be a little inconsistent. All right, it seems to be unnecessarily limiting um, the layout. I guess giving 12 options, yeah, 3 times 4, 12 options would be overkill. And I guess only having two buttons would be underkill. All right, that would be a coin flip. But it's sort of odd to me that they, hey, what's up? Uh, no, it isn't. No? Nope. Uh, is this a BU building? This is, in fact, a BU building. What room are you looking for? It's real Well, the micro microcomputer class doesn't meet here. Do you have your schedule? No. Uh, I'll tell you what. If you go down to BU 202, yeah. what, wait a minute. What's, yeah. what's the, the office? office yeah, the uh, business office, BU 211. Ask them, and they can point you in the right direction. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> um, at any rate, it seems inconsistent that they have hard-coded three rows, and yet they have the flexibility to add individual buttons. Is that because it's a linear layout? No, I can't think of a good reason. Nothing's going underneath it. Yeah, I can't really think of a good reason. The only thing I can think of is, you know, there is a theoretical good way to do programming. And then there's the practical, well, I'm going to make some assumptions that's going to make my life easier. All right? And in this case, I think their assumption that you're not going to have any more than three rows is an assumption they make just to make their life easier. And so they give some flexibility where you can vary between three, six, and nine, but um, you, you can't, like, vary. You know, you don't have unlimited flexibility there. And that's fair, I mean, to do. I do it all the time, and, and again, the process of going back and looking at your code and seeing how you can do better is called refactoring. So maybe whoever developed this, if they had another month to work on it, would have went and cleaned that up a little bit. But as it stands now, if you think about the nature of a quiz, nine options on a multiple choice seems to be plenty, all right? So to give the options between 3, 6, and 9, you probably don't need to do much more than that. Don't you have to assign the, um, that button has to be assigned to the table row 0 yes. in, in the code? Yes. So what you're saying is uh, if you had to go for unlimited amount of buttons, like 2 to 20, now you got me wondering how you would set up. That how I would set it? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I might have, I might inflate a table row, and then with the table row, inflate the buttons and put them in, and then add the table row to the table. So I would like do what we're doing twice. We're going to be inflating buttons and putting them in the table row that's already defined. I would have an XML for a table row, an XML for a button, 
and then I'd figure out how many rows I needed, you know, figuring two a row or three a row or whatever. I would then loop through, inflate that many tables, oh, I'm sorry, that many table rows, add the appropriate number of buttons, and then add each table row to the table. So, it probably would be the way to do it. All right. <coughs> Nothing earth-shattering here, though. Um, next thing that we're going to look at is the animation. And the animation is kind of cool. All right. We can look in here. And the animation is done in an XML file. And here's a nice thing about this is this animation is defined and we define it, we put it in an XML file, we can apply that wherever we want to. So for example, this shake, the no you're incorrect, all right, um, we put in an XML file. We could make a lot of things shake if we wanted to, all right, not just the flag, we could make the text box shake when they got it incorrect or whatever. Let's look at this XML file and then we'll look to see how this animation gets applied to the flag and shakes the flag. And then we'll talk about things that we could do. <clears throat> now, here's an interesting thing, right? Talking about um, how you could write this in a way to localize it. Everywhere in the world, is shaking your head like this mean no? No. There's places where, in fact, I worked with a guy um, somewhere in Asia. He would drive my boss nuts because he'd go, no, you know, as he's talking. It, you know, it, it drove him crazy for a while, you know, until he got used to it and realized that that's, that's just the thing. So how could you do that? Again, you could put some localization on there to put a different version of this animation. So you'd create a resource qualifier for this animation file that would say if I'm in a certain locale make the shake go vertical instead of horizontal all right if you wanted to and if you felt it was necessary all right animation is in an XML file all right <coughs> animation is a, is a set of things that we're going to do so the root tag is simply a set all right we have three nodes here to translate, and we'll look at some of the other options as well. But translate effectively says, take something where it is and put it somewhere else. All right. Now, let's notice where, notice the attributes on the translate. Translate from X position zero, what does that mean? It means it's starting point. <coughs> to delta X, delta, delta meaning the change in X, of negative 5% P, what would you suppose that would be? That would be backwards because it's a negative number, and 5% of the available space. And the duration is going to be 100. 100 what? 100 milliseconds. Okay, millisecond being a thousandth of a second. So this would be a tenth of a second that it's going to take. Step two starts at that negative five position, goes to positive five. So the flag's here. In one tenth of a second, it goes negative point five. It then goes past zero back to positive 0.5. So that's where you're getting the shaking action. So it goes from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. It takes one tenth of a second. And the start offset is 100. Again, 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. What do you suppose that offset does? Without that offset, what would happen? I'm not really sure what would happen, but it wouldn't be good. Would it, is it ended? Is it cause it to end? Well, what the offset does is we're gonna, this starts right.
right off the bat. There's no offset. This waits 100 milliseconds before it starts. So in other words, it gave, gives this guy a chance to complete, right? So this guy does its thing for 100 milliseconds. This one's offset is 100 milliseconds, so this doesn't start until that one is done. We don't like that. Near as I know. Yeah. yeah, near as I know. <clears throat> Finally, we do the same thing, and this one's offset is 200 milliseconds. Why? Because we want this to finish and this to finish. All right? So that's why we do the shake. So much easier than the way I was just going to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I was going to import timer, create a loop timer. And yeah, exactly. That's cool because it automatically. Now, timer. right. And so. This is for just a little shake. And again, when you think of your dice, you don't have to do something elaborate or crazy or whatever. But, you know, you can play around with it. Because there's more things that you can do than translate. All right? So we've seen the animation. This animation is out there. We can apply this animation to any view we want to. All right? But in our case, we're going to apply it to the flag view. Now, when you create your animation for the dice, you really only have to create one animation, right? And you'll apply that one animation to both of the dice. Now, let's look at applying that animation. whole bunch of stuff. Let's find it. That's what you get with the, what is it, the masters from the MIT? <laughs> Private animation, shake animation. Okay, we create an animation object. I'm just going to focus on the animation. We load the animation object from our XML. Yeah, in this case, it's loading it, yes. And we set the repeat count to three. So if you notice, it went back and forth three times. All right. I'll go, I'll, I'll go and copy this code into oh, okay. it. That'll make it easier. So let's look at this. <laughs> There's our animation. Oops, that's our import. Here is our animation. All right. Animation for incorrect guess. We define what that animation consists of. It consists of those things that are in that animation file. So we load the animation in that file, and we set the repeat count to three. So you could have it do the animation several times. All right. So now we have this animation out there waiting to be sprung on the world. All right. It's loaded. It knows what it needs to do. It got those instructions from the XML file. It knows how many times it's going to repeat it. All right. We just have to put it to action. So, I'm not going to go through all of this code right now. I just want to show you where the animation comes in. Ah. That's where commenting is handy. Guess was incorrect. We want to play the animation. So notice how straightforward it is. We simply say for that view, start animation, and we say shake animation. And that's all we do to start it. Now, 
What if we wanted the text underneath that to be animated too? So we wanted to shake that as well. Actually, you wouldn't you want to go, you want to stay in that same area because it had animation. Yeah, I was, I was looking for, um, I was looking for the name of that guy. Oh. The thing I wanted to shake. Let's say I want to shake the question one of ten line. All right. Or, better yet, this title text view. We'll shake that one. All right. So, all we have to do is Make sure we have a pointer to it. Which we do not. I'll just put it down here. No, no big deal. All right. I can say text view T equals text view find view by id r dot id dot call it title text view. That's the one. So I'll just grab a pointer to it here. Notice they didn't grab a pointer to it before. Why not? Why didn't they have an instance variable set to this text box? They didn't need to. They, until I got the bright idea of shaking this guy, all right, um, there was no need to reference that. So I didn't need to point to it. Now that I got the bright idea to do that, I can go and point a reference to it. All I have to do then is yeah, go ahead. So if I add like a title box uh, to the top, but I have no need to actually use it whatsoever, I just want it to be stationary there and never change, I don't need to do this portion of it? Correct. I, I thought you still had to do this portion of it. No. Only you, if you want to manipulate you, it. You only, need, you, you only need to grab the ID, uh, grab an instance variable for it, if you want to somehow access and manipulate that oh. object. Yes, it is. So now we'll go, and I'm putting in, I'm doing the animation on both of those now. So now, if I get it wrong, I'm going to try to get it wrong, I hope. I got it right. I know that's not turkey, so I'll say turkey. Notice that both that and the flag shook. Because I've defined that animation. That animation can work to any um, view. All right, I just have to assign it to that. So if you're doing something like this with the dice, you come up with a nice animation that you like, you, uh, you don't really have to go and, and create two animations. You can create one animation and just apply it to both the two views. All right. Now, translate is one thing that you can do to shake it. What are some of the other things that you can do?
there's actually two, a couple different kinds of animations. We're looking at the property animation. Creates an animation by modifying an object's property value over a set period of time with an animator. All right? And for property animation, it starts out with set. Then we have a, a set of animations that we can do. And what are your choices? We saw translate was one of them. Here's translate. We also have rotate, scale, and so on. Actually, I think I, I misspoke before. Uh, what we're doing could be um, a, a property animation or it could be a tween animation. In our, in our case, when you say a tween animation, you simply describe what's going to happen and it generates everything in between. All right. So, fun one to do is to rotate. All right. So, let's rotate this. I know it's probably easy to get to, but it's... Yeah. Re remind me when, when the class is finished okay. so I don't shut everything down. But let's go in here to our incorrect shake and rotate from degrees 0 to degrees 360. Pivot X and why? That is like, are we going to pivot from the corner or we want to pivot from the center of this? I'm not sure how big these images are. Let's pivot from, yeah, that'll, we could do zero, zero. That would be pivoting from the corner. Probably would want to pivot from the center, yeah, but. it's not a negative. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So let, let's, let's pivot from 50-50. We'll see. Or let's do 100-100. So, let's go and run this now. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say that you well, could do the scale, right? Change, yeah. I, I, that was one I was going to say. That's why I was looking at that. I was like already seeing in my mind like how I'm going to do this animation. That stuff was going really, really cool. Okay. So now when we get it wrong. Okay, I don't think that's Bosnia. It is. <laughs> okay, that's Norway, I'm almost sure. So I'll pick on man.
Yeah. Okay, that's not Spain. So I'll pick Spain. Nope. Whoop. Flip. Angola. Correct. All right. Um, I'm thinking that's Ghana. Flip. And so on. So, in thinking of like a dice animation, I would think some combination of rotating and scaling, where the scale you could either have it get really big and come down to small, or small and go to big, or something like that. Um, let's, let's look at that website. I'm sure it was developer Android. Yeah. Right. Actually, I, I, I think I think you don't have to, but in my case, since I did from zero to three sixty degrees, yeah. it ended up boom uh, back where it started. So yeah. that's why my particular one, yeah. All right, and let's go in here. This is one of those things that like, you know, like, this is like 2% of the assignment, but like most people probably spend like 70% of their time <laughs> on it. Yeah. It'll be like the crate, you know. So let's go from, from X scale. it up. I put the offset wrong. No, because all of the, uh, I kept hitting the button all the way to the right and it kept saying correct, 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 like six countries in a row. That was pretty funny. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now, what about adding a sound to it? Absolutely. All right. You could, you could add the sound to the rolling of the dice if you wanted to. You could, you could play that. We haven't talked about that, but I would think that would be easy enough um, to do. You could actually, if you have dice, you could record rolling the dice on a hardwood table. <laughs> would that all go in the animation too? That would not go in the animation. Create a separate file for You'd create a separate file for that. Let's, let's look at that. That's not part of the assignment. But, <laughs> oh, Yeah, too bad there wasn't like a, like you could shock the person too if they right. they got them. Take a picture of them. Yeah. <laughs> Android play sound effect. Seems pretty straightforward. Huh? Well, it's not working now. <laughs> it's 
person to ask it about it. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. It's too straightforward. Playing sounds on Android. was playing it where you could like pan it between the two speakers, I think. Are there two speakers in an Android or just one? Sometimes. It depends on the okay. phone. The headphone jack would definitely have. Yeah, two. Two, yeah. yeah. I would almost think that by default it's for both speakers. If there is one, one speaker, if there is one, the Android operating system would probably, right. I would think it's set that Well, again, looks looks pretty straightforward to to play that uh, to play a sound. So you certainly could do that. All right. Any questions about that? Okay. I'm thinking the next thing for me to do would be to look at the menus, and I'm not sure I really want to do that because we only have about 10 minutes left. So if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to call it uh, a night a little bit early today. All right. If you have questions about your particular assignments, you want to show me a completed assignment, we can, we can do that now. Is anything due this week, or is it next week? Well, there's something due this week. Yeah, you have to. The scrolling to the rock, paper, scissors, yeah. Okay.